In this video, we're going to demonstrate how we use Dynamic CT preoperatively to map out the pathway from the SMA through the marginal artery of Drummond to the endolate cavity. And these arrows have shown the, uh, now we're showing the endolate cavity and how we, the approach of how we're actually going to try and get there. Uh, that last arrow points out the first branch of the IMA. Really, when you embolize, you don't want to occlude the sigmoid branches. Here's the angiogram, it's just confirming. Um, the, there's a, a reverse curve catheter in the SMA and it demonstrates the uh, approach through the middle colic artery, through the marginal artery and back into that aneurysm cavity. We started off by putting a tour guide into the origin of the SMA and then used a burn and an angle glide wire to engage in the SMA. It sometimes can be challenging to make that turn uh, up into the um, middle colic artery. Uh, here you can see we actually engaged it with the with the glide wire directly. Um, occasionally we use um, uh, microcatheters that can be recurved into that. Once you get in there, the catheter tends to uh, fly around the, the marginal artery of Drummond. And so once we've done that, <clears throat> we will engage the middle colic artery with the uh, burn and then using the combination of a microcatheter and uh, an 014 wire will navigate along the marginal artery of Drummond towards the origin of the uh, inferior mesenteric artery. So you can see that the, the path which was outlined off the CAT scan, uh, yeah, there's some deformity when you put catheters inside it, but it's remarkably, uh, remarkably accurate. And the nice thing about this is uh, you minimize the amount of dye, you just really follow uh, that track. Occasionally these, branch, these wires go down a little side branches, you've got to uh, disengage them, but by and large, if we uh, follow the, the track which we've drawn off the CAT scan, it's uh, remarkably good. <clears throat> So here we are now, and we change the angle uh, throughout this uh, so that we can uh, optimize uh, the, where the various different side branches come off so we know whether or not we're engaging them. So here, again, you can see these side branches. Uh, we're going to advance the microcatheter uh, with its wire uh, towards the yellow, which is the where we've drawn in the endolate cavity inside the aneurysm. And ideally, you want to get all the way inside the aneurysm and then uh, we're going to plan is to fill that with onyx and then back out and embolize the um, IMA probably with uh, uh, with coils. <clears throat> so we've confirmed the, we're in the marginal artery. Now you can see the, um, uh, the wire and the microcatheter being advanced. Looks like it's going down a side branch here. You just pull back. Uh, we usually put about a 45 degree angle onto that uh, uh, guide wire and then redirect uh, towards uh, the uh, the marginal artery. And you can see we're actually uh, back following that track. Again, you can see how reassuring it is when you've got that um, the path already delineated. Yeah, you can do it with, uh, with dye once you get there, and you do have to confirm it. Um, but by and large, we think there's very little, which you're going to see in an angiogram, which was not already visible uh, on a uh, well-acquired uh, pre-op CTA. So spend some time getting the wired catheter uh, all the way up into the aneurysm sac. Once you get there, of course, you're going to confirm that you're inside the aneurysm sac, and then we'll start uh, using uh, Onyx to actually fill the aneurysm sac. <coughs> You can see it's a little tricky at this point. But overall, the whole thing, then you can see that's going down a uh, side branch there, and we've turned the roadmap back on or the overlay back on. <clears throat> and now we're actually off and running, heading towards the aneurysm. Uh, so the wire's now being followed. You can see the little radio pick marker on the tip of that direction uh, microcatheter is what we're using here. <clears throat> and once you get beyond that uh, last sigmoid uh, sigmoid branch, use it goes right up into the aneurysm sac itself. So it looks like we're in the aneurysm. Uh, we've advanced. There you can see the microcatheter with the arrow marker. Uh, you're going to inject dye and confirm that you're actually in the aneurysm sac. Although you know we're ninety nine percent sure. <clears throat> there you go. That's exactly what you. What is nice is how we see how it conforms to the uh, markers that we drew on the CT scan. And at this point in time, you can see the critical part here is that first sigmoid branch. We don't want to take that out. 
you start off by flushing the catheter with the DMSO. You got to know what the volume of the catheter is. You fill it with DMSO, and then we can bring in the Onyx. In this case, um, we're using um, uh, Onyx 34, I believe it was. The number relates to the speed of polymerization, so we don't really want it to go too far. So slowly injecting it, we've speeded this up a little bit. Uh, it's a slow process injecting Onyx. What you're watching for is any evidence about refluxing back down into the IMA or going out too far into other lumbar arteries, <clears throat> especially if you're going towards the spine. You can see the spine, the spinal cord is posterior here, so you can keep an eye and make sure that we're not, nothing is going in that direction. So we've speeded this up a little bit. Again, this is a slow process. One tip is to use road mapping. When you inject onyx, it becomes very difficult to see where the microcatheter is. And so if you use road map, it subtracts out the onyx that's in there and lets you see where the new onyx is going. It's a neat little trick. Why onyx rather than coils? Again, you kind of want the onyx to track along the, the end of the cavity, uh, if possible, into the origins of any other lumbar arteries that are in there. At this point in time, we're backing the microcatheter out just a little bit, trying to make sure that the onyx goes into a new area of the space. You can see it migrating more superiorly there, posture superiorly. Changing the angle. The nice thing about these fusion marks is they move with the as we change the gantry angle. So it auto auto corrects for you any time you change the gantry angle. And what we're trying to do now is optimize so we can see exactly where the origin of that sigmoid branch is. Obviously, we lost. The uh, problem is if you um, if you plug up the catheter with onyx, um, then it's very difficult. You can't really clear it. You have to take it out and and get back in there. And that's what happened in this situation because we really wanted to drop in some coils really to uh, finish it off. So now we're starting to drop these coils in. These are interlock coils, uh, probably five or six millimeter coils. We use relatively short ones. Uh, I don't want to put a real long one. I'd rather put two or three in so we have control over it. It's always the last coil we put in that gets you in trouble. So you're kind of pulling the microcatheter back and advancing. Obviously, these are basically 018 coils. <clears throat> and that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see it coiling up like that. One last coil, yeah, nicely packed, and hopefully not cover the branches. <coughs> there you go. Once we've done that, shoot some dye in there. At that point, we're we're finished. We don't want to see any flow going back into the uh, aneurysm cavity per se. You take a small syringe with twenty five percent contrast. You see the branch is still there; it's not flowing back. And we're happy with that and we terminate the procedure. So this really shows how we can use a preoperative CTA, in this case a dynamic CTA, to map out uh, the entire procedure. Thank you.